So as you further fill out your profile, the point of that is to make you more enticing to be connected to. No one's going to want to connect to someone that doesn't have any of their experiences added or even their picture and such. Mine obviously is very incomplete, it still says beginner, but you are going to complete that as high as possible all the way to the top so that you have the uh, most complete profile. We can do that later because I want to talk about then creating the business profile. Uh, so whatever we're doing here, make sure you've saved. And then under interests, let's go look at companies. Companies. There's a section on companies where then you will get content here as well. Or more importantly, probably create a company page. Raise brand awareness, announce career opportunities, and promote your products and services with a LinkedIn company page. Wherever there's a learn more or help or whatever, you should take a look at it because, you know, it's their network. It can be very useful to read their opinions on how to use it, how to get out of it, the best out of it. And it's kind of a long article with a lot of subsections. Uh, but I would look into it. Um, doing the learn more, but I'm going to select the create button, company name, company email. Company pages offer public information about each company on LinkedIn. To add a company page, please enter the company name and your email at this company. Only current employees are eligible to create a company page. Uh, so the name goes there, the email, and then you have to verify that you are an official representative and have the right to act on behalf of the company. Um, so ideally what LinkedIn is looking for is, let's say I've got uh, Victor's Web Solutions, and, I, and it wants an email address at the company. Technically, for the smoothest results here, you want something like admin at victorswebsolutions.com. They're going to be most looking for some sort of email address that is an official looking email address of that company. And that is going to contrast with what if I had victorswebsolutions at gmail.com. <coughs> Anyone can create a Gmail account, a Yahoo account, a a Hotmail account, etc., and put anything in front of that at. So, the real White House at yahoo.com. And so, this is going to be less um, real to LinkedIn than having the more professional email like that. <clears throat> this email here, however, you will not be able to get it for free. You won't be able to get a free Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail. This is going to be through the, through the process where we don't have time to get into, where you have to create your email address or your company website through a service provider, through the many, many that are out there like Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, etc. We don't have really time to get into that topic. We talk more about that in my web design class or SEO class and such. But... Uh, some big names to get a professional website and a professional email very briefly. I'm not going to really visit them. I'm just going to mention GoDaddy.com. There's Bluehost.com. HostMonster.com. Uh, these are ones that I've personally dealt with. HostGator.com. These are ones that I've pers personally uh, dealt with uh, for myself or clients, and these are big names in that industry of, of uh, being service providers so that you can get victor.com, so you can get victorswebdesigns.net, so that you can buy um, amazingwebdesigner.biz, so that you can get those names as well as a professional email attached, sales at victor.com admin at um, amazingwebdesigns.org, recruiting at uh, whatever dot whatever. 
and these are not free and you can look at them on your own they range in price wildly because they're all in competition this and 500 others are in competition for your business to sell you these services they're all very comparable all four of these are offering you almost the same thing for a variety of different prices and services and features but this is where you get your professional website and your professional email they have to be, I hear some people say that professional business side, instead of using free, they have a, if you pay for it, you have a more quality or something like Definitely. That? Definitely. If you go to these paid ones, you're going to get better quality. Your website will not crash as much. Your website will be faster because the free ones, everyone wants free. Yes. And then so those free ones oftentimes also have advertising built in. That's how the free ones make money. They're not making money from your account, but they're making money from putting ads on your website. So I wouldn't go with the free ones. Maybe just to understand how this works, but not for professional. Do you have any of those four that you recommend? I recommend them all. These are all the four that I've dealt with myself. There's many others that are out there that I didn't mention, because these are the ones that I would recommend that I've dealt with. My personal website I've had for, on GoDaddy since 2001 never had a problem. Big clients that I have, they're also on Bluehost for years. No problem. And HostMonster and HostGator. Which one? GoDaddy. Yeah. You, all of these guys are in competition and I've, and I've called GoDaddy at midnight and they answer and they're, you know, they're in Arizona one time zone away and, I, and they answer and they get the job done. They're all like that. I've dealt with all of them. Um, and the thing is that if you go with the smaller companies, the free companies, that's where that suffers, the tech support. Everyone can offer you a server and an email, but it's going to be the tech support to call them, to complain to them, and to get it fixed. And these companies are pretty good on top of that. I know that GoDaddy and Bluehost are 24-hour tech support. I'm pretty sure HostMonster and HostGator also. The point of that is that when you add a company here, they want a real company, not just the, you know, any fly-by-night organization. And technically, you could have a company that you run out of your garage. That's fine. But the more professional it is, it looks and is set up, the better. Let me see what happens here. I'm going to put in a fake email and everything and just continue. We're sorry that new company cannot be created at this time. Is it because I have to go to Unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't run into this actually. Uh, I'm running into it because I know I don't I, I have an unverified email address from the personal. That might be part of the problem. So maybe if you do verify your email, it will let you go through. And if not, there is a uh, there is, it said help here. So I, I guess we can't proceed from here, but this would be the screen where we would create the, the company. And maybe if it's preventing you, you need to verify that email. And we're all making probably a fake email, uh, a fake profile right now, so that's why it doesn't let us. But on your real profile, you would, I would try it here. Maybe there's something under frequently asked questions, or there's the help. But you know, it is, it is it is doable, as I've shown you in my company, PMD Interactive. We added it. Now, it was a few years ago, so I don't know if they've changed their system to make it more stringent, but you are able to create your own company. So for the moment, uh, that's as far as I can lead you. I can lead, I can lead you horses to water, but you're going to have to drink yourself. Um, so try this. Go back on the home button. We're all going here anyway. Go back to the home button here and it'll probably be a big yellow pop up there that says confirm. In any event, let's go back to home and let's look at other aspects of LinkedIn. Uh, it's got a, a very cool publishing platform which simply means you can post content and it's got it in a couple different ways. Um, you've got the basic sort of updates, just like Facebook, just like Twitter, etc. On the home page here, I have share an update, upload a photo. 
Again, you're going to use this for professional purposes. You're not going to put in a photo of when you went on vacation and you took a photo in front of the you know, Trevi Fountain and all of that. You're going to be sharing updates and content that is relevant to potential connections, potential customers, etc. So if you click share an update, it says what's on your mind? And you write something, you can still attach a photo. Is it going to be public, just to your connections? Or if you also connect with Twitter, this will automatically go to Twitter. So instead of managing all of these networks separately, some of them will let you connect to each other. So when you post something on LinkedIn, it automatically goes to, to Twitter. Where on Twitter, maybe I have already 20 connections, and on LinkedIn I have only two. Well, maybe now my friends or connections on Twitter see this link back to LinkedIn, follow it, and connect with me on LinkedIn. If you do have a Twitter, you have to connect to it, so I'm not going to just yet. No, it's just that they made the connection and they both find it mutually beneficial that you're able to share between the two. It used to be on Facebook, for example, you used to post to Facebook and it would automatically go to Twitter. Now that, now that Facebook doesn't need Twitter's help or anything, there's no more of that connection. So it depends on the network. Some of them are, are open and connected and some of them are not because they're separate companies. So what kinds of updates would I be sharing? I would share things that are relevant to my company or to followers or potential followers or that sort of thing. So uh, in terms of my internet company, let's say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this. Um, my company's website, pmdinteractive.com, we have a blog, and in the blog we share valuable things such as the blog checklist part three let's say I wanted to share my blog post from my website onto my LinkedIn there's several ways to do it but one way is to simply on LinkedIn here paste a link of what I'm trying to share it will then create a preview a nice little banner for what you're linking to. It'll try to take the picture, try to take the text of what you're sharing, which you can change. If you've got more than one picture, you can change pictures, you can remove a picture. This text that was added automatically is editable. So all of that is editable. I'm sharing that, and I can further add commentary to it, saying Let's say this is Victor's Web Solutions, but I'm sharing someone else's blog post. So I could say, uh, found this fascinating article on writing blog posts. And so let's say I had 10 connections, and I'm sharing someone else's blog post. That's totally fine. I'm sharing something from another profile. My followers, my connections could find that valuable. What's more valuable is me sharing my content that I created. Uh, in the realms of social media, we have always the option of sharing original content and repurposed content, someone else's content. And I would say a good rule of thumb is 80-20, 80%, 20%. 80% original content, 20% repurposed content. So if you're going to make 10 posts this month, um, 8 of them are going to be of your original stuff, your own posts to your own YouTube, your own blog, your own Twitter, your own thing that you wrote, and 2 of them are going to be someone else's. That ratio there benefits you more because it's your own stuff that is being published to LinkedIn and to the world that will get you traffic. At a certain point, probably, you're going to run out of original content. Then you can start to post other people's content. But really, that's one of the big jobs of a social media marketer. What are we going to post again? We can post stuff that's old. Let's say we posted something a year ago. We can post it again. It's been a whole year. I've probably gotten new followers that would benefit from this post. If you're not comfortable reposting old stuff, 
I would say update that old content because things probably changed. This blog post that I, that I wrote, it's from September, but let's say it was September last year. What if new techniques in blogging have, have developed? I could go back to my blog post, make some edits, and post it again and right here. Something like a classic blog post with new content. Check it out. And so I'm sharing content as much as possible, my own original content, and to some degree other people's content. And so right there, all zero of my connections saw this. You're still going to post content that no one is seeing yet. You're going to fill in your profile as completely as possible. You're going to post three to five to ten posts to no one, because then when you go to the next phase that I'll talk about of trying to get connections, you will have content where people say, this is a valuable person to connect to, to follow, <coughs> not just a blank anonymous name with no posts. So three posts, five posts, ten posts, before you start to try to get followers. I would say at the minimum, three things at least to entice people to follow. Five is better. Ten is better than better. They give up. Yeah. They feel that it's not working for them. Exactly. But that's one of the things about social media. You always want to use it as much as you can. Ideally, once a day, but that's a lot of work. Once a week is very good. Once a month is okay. But you still want to use it as much as possible to get better at it, to get, uh, to get good at it, to, to get connections. So when we do this for a company, we, we, po we try to post at least three times a week. That's more work, obviously, and much more content, but it works. Some of my clients, if you search up, if you search on Google, for example, Italian restaurants in Chula Vista, that client shows up number one compared to all the competition, compared to all of them. It's very important to choose your content to, you know, customer care or something very, what's yeah. the purpose of the company or some kind of your value. That's one of the big downfalls that people have when they start using social media for professional purposes. They think about it in terms of personal. Whereas for personal, sure, all right, today I had pizza. Who cares? My friends, but not my customers. But if we're saying today uh, we're serving our brand new original pizza with uh, our garlic topping or whatever, that might be more valuable to a, to a customer. So yes, always think about what could be valuable to your connections. Obviously, you're going to post stuff that you care about and that you know about and that is important to you, but still, what is important to your readers, your audience? And I might run out of something to say. Maybe I make myself a goal that every week I'm going to write something new. That's a great goal. But then in, in eight weeks from now, I'm, I'm starting to get writer's block. It's okay to share something that I found on, on Social Media Examiner. It's okay that I find something on Wikipedia. It's okay that I find something else from one of my other connections to share. But try as much as possible original content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's some people hiring this, I see some people join a using topic similar to related to your company. Uh -huh. Kind of really job that existed, you know, trying to sort of go for a website or link that sort of go to your company, then you know, trying to put it because you don't have no time to do it, mm. something like that. Exactly, like as you're saying back here, Ed, that yeah, you, you seem to like you need to hire someone to do this. I'm already running my business and I need to hire someone else to do it that well, often. You need to hire somebody to run my business. Oh, okay, you're going to trade up. <laughs> so. Possibly, it depends on the company, and then you. Yes, but you might see that more and more. Uh, in the real world, this also happens where I'm about to open a business on Main Street, and then the sign says "Coming soon." People are going to walk up to you and say, "Can I speak to the owner?" Because they're going to try to get a job for you to do the business cards, or to do the menus, or to do the social media. They're just going to walk up to you, and that happens, and it's and it could work out for you. You don't know. 
you have to check out the person, how well they, they run their business. But now you're seeing the virtual version of that, that they might want to post stuff to entice you to hire them because they're posting stuff like you or about stuff that you are interested in and make a connection to you. It says, you know, you, oh, you seem to be a, uh, a realtor and you seem to be struggling in realty. Look at our profile. We, we tweet like realtors, hire us. So you're going to see that version of the happening in the real world happening on the digital world too. And social media ma manager or social media marketer or social media guru, or social media ninja is a position that you could uh, hire someone to do full time. You know, my company, we, we run social media for various companies and uh, it could be more than one of us working at it at one time but we do post and ideally we want to post to as many of these networks as possible but obviously within budgetary considerations it might be a bit expensive for, to hire a company to do so many networks and that, that's why in my two classes I talk about the eight ones that might be the most valuable to you Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and then uh, Yelp so all of those eight networks could be valuable to you. That's eight times the work. And on some networks, it can help you by here, I can post to LinkedIn and automatically goes to Twitter. Okay, that's one, that's two down at once. Um, but I'm gonna be mentioning a little bit later a website that will let you post one time to this website and it'll automatically go to many networks at once. I'll mention that one. There's a couple of those that do that. I'll get to it before we wrap up today, but um, it is a lot of work, social media management, but a company like uh, Coke or Nike or Chipotle or McDonald's or this college has someone working on that full time, posting stuff to all of these avenues, all of these channels, because this is all marketing. This is all advertising, just like you still have to invest in advertising for posters or billboards or radio ads television ads, Super Bowl ads, you have social media as a form of advertising. To that end, Face, uh, LinkedIn offers a new way to also post stuff. This one is going toward your current connections, possible future connections if you've got it public. But they offer a new system also under interests. If you look at Pulse, Pulse is sort of like what's new blog posts on a variety of topics. They're coming from various people. And after you verify your account, you're going to have the ability also for you to post, like blog posts, contribute to Pulse within LinkedIn. So if you've been hearing that blogging is important, you're going to hear that in my SEO class, blogging is important because that creates content that could be shared, that could then get you traffic. Uh, LinkedIn nowadays gives you a platform for free to blog. It might not show up for you automatically because I haven't verified my account. But once you've set it up, verified and used it, you will have the option also to post. You'll have a blogging posting ability. So I can't show it to you because mine's a fake account, but maybe I'll log into my personal one and you're gonna see under interest the ability. I forget if they put it under pulse or it has an extra one, but there is blog, post the blog. You're, it's the publishing platform of LinkedIn. So to get the most out of LinkedIn, you want a completely completed profile. You want as many, um, as much education and uh, skills and projects as, you, as you're doing. You want to create a company profile. Again, we couldn't get that far because it's... It might be also because your account is very new. And also, are you using your email address of your domain? 
we might have to check the help or possibly sometimes what happens is when we're all in one room connecting to a certain social network sometimes the social network thinks hey is there some sort of spam farm going on and it doesn't let us I know what happens when we do the tumblr class they're one of those strictest ones no as soon as soon as you go home you might be able to do it <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. Um, I think it's just that LinkedIn sees everyone is connected from the same room, uh, and therefore there's a problem. Hmm. When we do Tumblr, some of us are able to create the account and some of us not. But when they go home, then they're able to create it. So that might be happening here. Or we might have to check the, the help system, what's going on. So you, you will be able to create that account, uh, the, the business page eventually. You're then going to, you've got these two things, basically two blank sheets of paper, the personal and or the business. And then so what you're going to do with them is you're going to be posting content, regular updates, photo updates. You can attach links or photos. And what you're also going to be doing eventually is you're going to be looking at Pulse. You're going to be contributing via the publishing platform. I don't have the ability yet, but it's going to be listed under interests. That's a place for you to have a blog, to have a voice, to create content. And lastly, we can take a look at groups. Groups is the place where you're going to connect with like-minded people. Once you've got your profile set up and a few posts that you've made, then it's time to connect with the people that would help grow your business under groups. This is new here. I haven't seen this, this tour, so I'm going to check it out. Welcome to the new LinkedIn groups. Join private communities, enjoy meaningful conversations, and get the latest ideas and news. Let me see what the quick tour tells me. Hmm. Quick tour didn't really tell me anything. Okay. Well, I can create groups and I can search for groups. I don't recommend you create your own groups simply because who are you? You know, are you, do you have a degree in whatever you think you're talking about? Do you have 20 years of experience on whatever you think you, you're talking about? Who are you to entice people to join that group? Maybe you're a Dreamweaver Pro, so I'm going to create a group called Dreamweaver Pros. There's already probably a dozen Dreamweaver groups out there that have plenty of traffic that are not going to come to your group. So I would first instead search for groups, either discover or search my groups. So let's say I'm looking for web design. Discover groups, search groups, Photoshop. If this search thing right here is not quite working, remember we've also got the search on top here. If I click up top here and say search groups, we change that to groups. Let's say I'm going to search for social media. So I get some suggestions. I can ignore them and click the search button to give me a bigger listing of results. I usually like to do it that way. It might be suggesting some things, but usually I just ignore that and click search so that it focuses it this way. The point of searching this way, then, is you also get filters. Show me groups in a certain language. Maybe there's not so many results in, in German, so I could be found easier compared to English, which is very large. Social media marketing. It has uh, nearly a million members, so a lot of people I could be connected to. Digital marketing, social media. 158,000 members, social media today, 146, innovative marketing, etc.
some of these will have a simple join and anyone can join. That's why that one's got nearly a million members. Some of them will say view because then you have to click ask to join and someone such an administrator like Chris Voss for Social Media News will check out your profile and see what you're about and what you've posted and then accept you or not. Once you've been accepted into a group, you will see the conversations, you will see the people in it, you will be able to post and converse and build your audience. You should be able to preview just about any group. Instead of clicking join, you could be able you should be able to click, for example, the name of the group. Here's everyone in it, lots of admins. Click the join button. This group has reached its maximum number of allowed. Are you yes, um, some of I, I like to join some of the ones that are a little bit more technical. Uh, like s you can join groups for specific software. Like uh, I like the Photoshop group, um, Dreamweaver. I like the Windows Apps group. Uh, so yeah, these are pretty valuable because then you're connecting with people that care about what you care about. Potential customers, connections, clients, etc. I like to keep up with it here and there, but really it has fallen by the wayside a lot. So that group has a little quieter than the WordPress groups, for example. But I still use Dreamweaver here and there, mostly for my own personal stuff. But uh, there's, there's going to be a group or several groups about many of these things. Yes. You see the conversation, does it come to your email or do you have to sign in? You're going to get a digest of what has been talked about, which you can turn off if you don't want the digest. But you're going to see it uh, when you're logged into LinkedIn. Up on the home screen, it will also show up here the latest conversations and such. Or you can go directly back to interests, back to groups, and click to only view the content of that group. So you can even set it to get daily email digests or every new post as it arrives on your email, you're going to get a full email. So all of those all of those edits for how you get emails are going to be found under the settings. It's going to be in there somewhere to go in there and say only show me um, email digests from this group, not that group. So it's under settings. So there's, there's plenty to learn on, 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 on Facebook, and we've covered pretty good amounts. And again, I've led you to the water. It's up to you to drink. I've also talked about uh, the search, uh, or the social media examiner. I'll mention another couple of websites here as we wrap up the day. Moz.com, M-O-Z. They are a big name in the world of uh, social media and marketing and all of that. And their big thing about them is that they sell their services. They got products and pricing. But they have a very cool free blog with a lot of great information on a bunch of topics. So over at the Moe's blog, you can explore categories, basic SEO, events, e-commerce, copywriting, mobile web versus mobile apps. Where should you invest your marketing? Why you must become a 10 times brand. Let data take the wheel. The ridiculously smart guide to buying legit Twitter followers. So all of these articles that come out on a regular basis for free. And then if you say, okay, this is all great, but maybe I should hire someone to do it for me. Here we go, $99 a month. So social media examiner, mose.com, the blog are two websites that I would say to keep up to date with this stuff. It's always changing. And lastly, if you're going to take this class and my other classes, you're going to be creating a lot of social networks. You're going to be creating a lot of channels for you to publish to. That could be a lot of effort, a lot of work, and it's okay to publish the same thing on all your networks. Ideally, you should change them up a little bit. The same picture, perhaps, on every network, but the text a little different. 
Um, that's a lot of work. But here's a possible website that will help you give you a better way to share with buffer.com. You can sign up for free and you've got a paid version with more features. But here you would be able to connect your Twitter and your Facebook and your LinkedIn and your Google Plus all together in one dashboard. You log in here, you, you set up a post, you set up a picture, etc. And then you schedule it through Buffer and it will automatically log in for you and post it at those days and times. That's one way for you to have a life, to run your business. Because you can set yourself... <laughs> you could set this up on the weekend, you know, so you could, you could uh, forego your Saturday night and set up a whole week or a whole month of posts and let it run automatically and it'll post for you. Now, automation has its pros and cons, of course. Question? Next question would be if there's any incompatibility issues with the different platforms that's a bit of an issue sometimes because let's say you've written a 200-word a blog post and you want to share it to all your networks. Twitter, obviously, is only going to show the first 140 characters of it, but then a link back to the full article. So ideally, on Twitter, I would be crafting a 140-character post and the link to my full blog. Um, and for example, one of the things that is not offered here is Instagram. I want to post to Instagram, but Instagram is a bit of an outlier in that the only way to post to Instagram is through a device. You can't post from a website at the moment. So you're not going to be able to post to every network here. It might look a little different from network to network just because of the limitations or the you know, settings of the network. But this works really well to, to get you working. And another famous one related to buffer where it lets you post to multiple is called Hootsuite. They also let you post to multiple profiles. I've used buffer more than Hootsuite, but I believe Hootsuite is the more popular one. Either of these will work for you, and there's the enterprise version, of course, with your own Captain Kirk. No, I mean with your own ability to post to more networks and such, more features, tech support and such. But the free versions, free aspects should be pretty good for beginners. Thirty-day trial. But really, if you're on a budget, Buffer is going to let you post to uh, to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google Plus for the big ones, and that'll uh, help you manage that. So the last thing that I'll mention, very briefly, because as I said, um, there's so many social networks out there. We're not going to get to talk about it at all, at all in this class, but here's something to educate yourself with. There's a network called tsu.co, 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 and what this one is, this is a social network. It's very reminiscent of Pinterest or, or Twitter or Instagram. But the big thing about this is that this network pays you. <coughs> Your content gets you paid. <coughs> Most of the social networks make money off of you. When you post something, uh, there's an advertising or there's something that the month that the companies are making money off of. Facebook is a very profitable company because every time someone clicks on purpose or accidentally on the ads and such, <coughs> Facebook makes money. Twitter makes money off of you, off of your tweets. All of the networks basically make money off of you. Sue is different in that you get, I think it's like 70 to 80 percent of the revenue that they make off of the ads and such. You get that. This is a very young niche network. How many of you have ever heard of it before today? It is gaining a little bit more traction. Oh cool. It's gaining a little bit more traction because Facebook hates them. It used to be that if you were posting a link on your Facebook to, to Sue, it would 
it would it would work. Now Facebook has blocked all links to Sue. And they're really bad about it because they've gone back to everyone's profile and deleted every mention of it back a month ago. And they're so bad, they've actually banned it from being used even in private messages. So if I'm sending messages to my friends and family privately, guess what? Facebook is looking at that and they're deleting mentions to this network. <laughs> Yes. Wow. Are they public yet? Sue? Not yet. I don't think they will. They're, they're very niche. But the cool thing is, okay, you can, uh, you can create an account here and claim it before anyone else. There's join right there. We're not going to get a chance to do it, but here's the thing. In order for you to join it, you need a referrer code. You need someone that already has an account to get you in. I have an account. So when you... When you sign up for this and you and you create the account, use the shirt code VN Campos, and that will connect you. That will let you get in. It's sort of an invitation only at the moment, and so if you use my short code, you will be able to get in. Maybe you'll never use it. That's fine. But at least claim your name before someone else. Do they have a business side of it too? They do. They have a business side in which you can, you know, post your stuff to make it fa be more visible to, to other people. They're, they're still kind of working on it to perfect it because at the moment you kind of have to talk a bit one-on-one -on -one with them to set up that. It's not quite automatic just yet like the other networks. But at the very least here... So this could you give me a quick quickly brief summary what's the different or what's the feature about different mailing address on this one? Would you get it? The, di the big difference is that it pays you when you use it. As you post pictures and comment and other people comment on you and share and all of that and gain social media exposure, you're actually getting paid for it. Now, you're not going to make like a million dollars off of it, but you are going to be getting money and the more you use it, the more you're earning. Whereas the other networks, they're making money off of you. You never see it. Here, they're making money off of you, but you get like 80% of it. And I don't have time to talk the whole details about it, but if you want to check it out, it's just another place for you to post your products or your customer testimonials or to reach a potential audience. It's like Twitter and Facebook. You can't really see much of it until you log in. But it's going to be like Twitter or Pinterest or Facebook, whatever, where you can connect with people, search hashtags, share content, get customers, etc. The other one, the last one that I'll mention, that also pays you for your interactions, this is even newer than Sue. I've known this one for about a year now. This one that is even newer that I just got into. You don't need any special uh, code or anything like that. Um, but the caveat, the catch is it's only in an app. You can only use it as an app, not as a website. It's Rabadaba. R-A-B-A-D-A-B-A. -A -A -A, Rabadaba. And this is another thing that you can get followers, you can post, you can use it for friends or family, for fun, for business. But you also get paid as you use it. Now it claims it's the world's first social media platform that actually pays you for your great content. No, Sue was before it. What's that? I've made like a cool like 12 cents off of Sue so far, but I haven't used it very much. If I use it much more, I would get paid more. Uh, this one is the newest one, Ravadaba. Again, it's like Twitter, it's like Instagram, it's like Pinterest, pictures, text, etc. But the thing is that um, you get paid. You're going to see also, they've got different terminology, but you're going to see replies and favorites and reshares, they call them redabs, and then how much it was worth. This one has been earning them 1,168 Raba bucks. 10,000 Raba bucks equals one dollar so the more of these uh, more of these posts that you make and, and content the more you know I've, I've been using it for like a month now and I think I've got like 4,000 
So I'm getting close to, to earning some money. Uh, and I have not been posting like 10 things per day. I've been posting one thing per day and I forgot like for four days. But this is another aspect, another social network to get into. It's only available on the app store, iPhone or Android, I believe. Uh, on the website, you can just get a preview of it, but you can't use it until you get the app. And so I'm letting you know of both of these networks because, yes, yet another social network to spend time on, but both of these at least will pay you to well, use you them. Both of them. You say only using for apps, like you know, Apple or something like that? On Sue, you can use the website. Okay. That one's fine. But on Rabadaba, you have to use an app. Okay. The Rabadaba app, which you get from the App Store. Yes. And no, Buffer or Hootsuite will not connect to these <clears throat> at the moment. They're so new, they don't have connections yet. You have to use the app directly. So. And if you're interested in knowing about Snoop Dogg's network, ask me after class. Um, so that, um, that's it for today. We're getting to the end of the day. We've learned a lot about LinkedIn and a variety of topics. When we come back next time, we're going to use Instagram. So that's going to work with, a, with an app. Uh, you do need a, a phone or a tablet or something. It doesn't work on the website. You have to create the account as an app. And uh, we're going to see how to do that next time. I'm going to see if I can get my device connected to here so you can actually see it. And then we'll create uh, we'll create an uh, Instagram account, which is very valuable, very popular network. It has actually more users than Twitter. Twitter's got about uh, 320 million users. And Instagram reached about 400 million about a month ago. So just for sheer number of people, Instagram could be very valuable. So that's it for the moment. We'll have a little bit of lab time until 1, and we'll do it again next time.